This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy or other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. Not sure if you guys heard today, but there was a solar eclipse. And I'm sure no one looked directly into it because it could cause permanent damage, but who am I kidding? One out of ten of you guys probably already did look at the sun today when you shouldn't have. Hello, everyone, and welcome to day three of VCT America's coming to you live from the Riot Games Arena in Los Angeles, California. Golden Boy here along the desk with Ender and uh, Mimi and Bala. Huh. Why are you guys? You know, that's just a screen, right? This thing is fake. I think I got the real sun right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, right there, right at the glimmer wow, of the top of my scalp. Y'all look like you're about to see there Dune in 3D. Like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> But I'm they don't have the sandworm popcorn yeah, bucket, know. you know? See, you need I, that. I figured I built up enough of a tolerance from the yeah. amount of times I've heard Hawk out that yeah. I could just look directly gonna, into oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> just a failure oh of a dab. It was really good, I think. I think that was good. I can't I see, but I yeah, felt well, Let's go real. ahead and talk about what happened on stage yesterday, shall we? Okay, because we started off the day with Evil Geniuses taking on G2, and we were excited for this game to see what the, you know, what EG has been cooking but G2 coming in with a new player in Icy, and you know, Mimi, I know you got your glasses on, so you're seeing things clearly here. What do you make of that game? What do you make of the matches we had yesterday? I was really impressed with this this new look G2. I think Icy fit into the roster well, did his role quite well on race. Leaf was looking good as well. And I mean, that second map was just a domination. But then we got on over to 100 Thieves here. And this squad as well, I mean, honestly, up against Sentinels, I think showing some great stuff, especially in this first map. Some of those set plays and ideas on Icebox are really good. I really like the macro calling coming through from 100 Thieves. Get map two, you know, it's Sentinels on split. We're, we're we're not asking for that much from 100 Thieves, but I think that was a promising first showing from 100 Thieves up against the, why is everyone <laughs> on this desk? Look, they, you look I was, ridiculous. I, was trying to figure I, out who I just felt trying. left out. I so I just want to be a part you, of this talk. Have them on now? It's like impossible. <laughs> I have to read the prompter. It's impossible to see. You it's don't like need actually, the prompter. You're a professional. I, you would think. But, What's happening next? Go. Uh, well, uh, okay, here we go. All right, well, up next, let's go ahead and talk about the match that we have lined up for us today. I don't even know if the camera's moving to the other side. Right. We got Crew versus Fudia. That is going to close out our first week of stage one here. And after a disappointing kickoff for both teams, someone's walking away with their first <laughs> win of 2024. Yes, Golden Boys Boy. Great job on that, Reed. Please <laughs> ad lib discuss. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I can, this, is, so uh, this is this is going to be uh, yeah. It's it's not the the best because it's like completely blacked out. This is quite fascinating. Any case, so well, don't uh, throw it. That's those are somebody's glasses, man. They paid this is like twenty dollars in the internet. Right now. <laughs> Damn, this guy would is you rough. pay twenty dollars? Okay. <laughs> supply and demand, baby. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? I've got a supply and demand for one of these two teams to win a game, folks. Hey, what? good news. They're because... gonna do it. They're gonna do it today. It's guaranteed. There's it's guaranteed. no supply, but there's a heavy demand to get a win for these games. And with the change ups and you know like the rules and needing to get those wins that's a this is a significant match for both teams i mean i feel like for our like not t creme de la crop like latte creme, creme de la creme yeah de la creme or cream okay. of the crop cream of the crop creme, creme of the top what, what? are you I talking didn't say about creme. i said creme <laughs> <laughs> Yes! <laughs> creme de la creme. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> They've just had a crazy shuffle back and forth between these players. It, it seems like we're constantly seeing new players hop into these different yeah. rosters. And now it's kind of a switcheroo. Nas were going over to a, the Brazilian side, and then you have Heat going over to the Latin side playing for Crew. But they're both kind of these last second changes for Heat, just a substitute while MTA is out with an injury. And on the other side, Nas were, it's kind of a question how much time have they actually had to practice with him and to fully implement him into the roster? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just excited to see all almost all the teams now we still yeah. have one left out but that's that's <laughs> yeah. really what it is because to me like this again i talked about yesterday how america's as a region is stepping up the, their game yeah these guys might be more towards the bottom end but at the same time like so everybody's leveling region. up at the same yeah yeah it's still an insanely competitive region no matter how you slice it but you know we're, we're asking some good questions but there's some more serious questions that we have to you know ask right this like gonna be serious. how'd you guys get your in-game name that's right that's 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 the, that's the question the I want to ask right now because it leads into our video <laughs> uh, how did you guys get your in-game names I'm curious uh, well when I was growing up I just had a lot of money so that's why they called me Bola. <laughs> <laughs> Play the video. That's <laughs> enough. 
Yeah, you know what? That's perfect. We put the question over to the players in this next installment of Profiles, and I'm going to go ahead and ask Bala for a loan. Can I have some money? <laughs> the story behind my gamer tag was that um, it was actually given to me at birth. Um, in Overwatch, I just was playing a character named Lucio. This was like at the beginning of Overwatch when I was pretty bad. And I had a duo uh, who was playing Anna, and when she nanoed Lucio, he would be Bustio. So I just copied it then when I was like 16. My gamer name is originally from my brother. Um, so his name is George, his last name is Moore. So it kind of like, whenever he like, we mumble, like I mumble a lot and he mumbles a lot. So it's like George Moore. And somehow, some way, like I think somebody did like jog Moore. There's like three iterations of it. It's from when I was on Xbox, um, but it was like, Z, 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 zombie, Z, 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 because there's 10 Zs there, so it became 10 Z zombie. I think it was like later in like Counter-Strike or something, I looked at my name and I just said, holy, this looks stupid. So then I um, took all like the the end part of the name, just cut it off so only 10s was left, and that's kind of how I came up with my name. I remember I was like 12 or 13 years old, and I just thought it like sounded cool, like it rolled off the tongue well. There was a Call of Duty player named Ego. That was my first name, right? And then I went to thesaurus.com. I think that's the right website. And then I just kept clicking words until I found a word that I liked. Meu nick é simplesmente meu nome. Eu já usei muito nick, cara, muito nick. Mas daí eu falei, ah, mano, vou colocar meu nome mesmo. I think when I was five years old, I just hit a keyboard with one hand. The four letters came out, and that's what was my name. Um, well, at first it was it was Ethan backwards. No one knew how to pronounce it, so I was just like, screw that. So I was using the quotation marks as my nickname. Quotation marks in Portuguese is aspas, so basically my name is quotation mark. My nickname antes de King era eh, Pancho, porque a los Francisco en español le dicen Pancho. Entonces no me imaginaba que un cáter en inglés dijera como there goes Pancho. Entonces dije ya, tengo que ponerme un nombre más como como americano por así decirlo. I feel like we learned a lot from that one. Yeah. Fun fact: Americans quick, love the king. So. Fun fact: My name's from an anime. Don't look it up. So what that's anime? A, what? Golden Boy. It's called Golden Boy. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. an anime called Golden from Boy. From the hit anime just Golden not Boy. Gonna, we're just gonna drop it there. All right, guys. All right. But if you look online, you'll find some fun stuff. In any what? case, what? Folks, what? let's what? dive into oh, today's geez. matchup and talk about Crew. Now, after a heartbreaking 2023 season stacked with close losses. It looked like this team ran into the same old problems that they ran into, you know, last year at kickoff. Yeah, it's been 581 days since this team won a game outside of that LCQ run yeah. in a VCT tournament. Like, it has been a drought for this crew roster. And a lot of people thought that it was going to be kind of the turnaround when they went on that crazy LCQ run. And they lost to champs. They showed up. They didn't win anything in the offseason. And then they also went out 0-2 in kickoff. So now they're again finally kind of making some shuffles, changing some things around. And... I think every fan is just hoping that they can break that streak, try and recapture some of that magic again. Well, I mean, Sentinels didn't win a tournament for 581 days. We love and the day they did thing. that, so I think they can win a regular season game. Yeah, that's true. Easy for crew. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like, my, my crew cope, which isn't, like, the, the most effective, I'll, I'll, that's the disclaimer on this <laughs> Great one. Great way to start. Is they only played one team in kickoff. They had to play G2 twice because they were in the group with sure. three teams, yeah. right? So we didn't actually get to see them against a lot of other competition. The important disclaimer there is that G2 did not lose look very strong during kickoffs. Yeah. This team needs to make some massive, massive yeah. adjustments coming I, I think in for me, too, uh, this is one of the first times crew has made a change that I'm excited to see where there's, there's, whether there's potential. I'm actually glad you mentioned that. La last year, when they made some changes, I wasn't necessarily, I was like, kind of like, what is going on? I feel like they were just kind of backing up because they made mistakes in the offseason. Sure. Here, I think they, you know, they're actually going somewhere here. With Does this inspire you, though? No, it's not inspiring, but my point is that last year was like, oh, we made mistakes. Like, Kesson was gone. Let's bring him back like oh let's go back to what we did before and here it's like okay there's it, it feels more like there's something available and they're gonna go for it and sure. it's, it's actually more talent being added the, the thing is though that this is because mta is injured they they've said that they plan to bring mta back yeah. in place of heat when he feels well enough when he's ready to compete again and i think it's a very strange move because for me heat and kesin are very similar players they're both guys that ask a lot of their team that are really good stars but can be kind of headstrong we heard from MIBR how Heat and the team had some, some kind of 
internal conflicts about the idea of the direction of the team. And that makes me really wonder, is he a player who's ready now to come into crew and kind of take a backseat to Kesnet? Is he ready to be a very different player than he was on MIBR? Because I think he'll have to be if this crew is going to be successful. I think my, my biggest fear for this team is they were already a team that it felt like the majority of their strategy, especially on an attacking side, was built entirely around sort of freeing up Kesnet to go off on his own and, and make the big plays, you know, find the right timings. And my fear is that now without MTA having more options to like set up the team, that it becomes even a little bit more fractured. And it's like, oh, now he, you also yeah. can go look for your own opening. So, yeah, I, I feel like from a strategic point, I, they have to do a lot of work to make a good overall plan coming in with What's this interesting move. to me, though, is that watching MTA play, he was so aggressive because yeah. yeah. Kesnet lurks so much. MTA was like solo entering sites on KO. So I do think there's a world where he can switch on to what we presume him to be playing, the initiator role. Yeah, because the role question style. is weird, yeah. too. Right? Yeah. They like, also, uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but they also uh, brought Klaus back in as the IGL. So yeah, he, he was on the team again. before, but now he's calling again for the first time in a long time. But he is the leader who brought them on that run all the way back at Champs. Yeah, so there, there are a lot of changes that they're going to be making here. And we'll need to be, uh, I guess, you know, a little heads up on this, especially for crew, because this is going to be a difficult challenge for them to kind of put all these pieces together. But for more on crew's IGL switch and everything else, let's go ahead and send it over to Geek Heavy, who's standing by with Klaus. Klaus, right over here. Now, you're IGL in again. I got to ask, uh, what went into that decision? Klaus, ¿en qué estuvo que ustedes formaron esa decisión de que tú seas el IGL? Mm, yo creo que fue porque soy yo en personal ya fui GL y que soy una persona que da muchas propuestas en otro juego y que Melzer se está haciendo medio incómodo, entonces como que volvimos un paso atrás, pero como que fue cinco pasos adelante. Yeah, so they made this decision thinking like five steps forward. Klaus is the kind of person that makes a lot of these big decisions in the game. So they kind of just like stepped back and decided that he was uh, more comfortable for this position. Awesome. Well, best of luck today. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, the crab bando. <laughs> Well, you certainly love to hear that. A comfortable crew can be quite good for all the crew fans out there who've been waiting for those wins to start to come through. But we have to talk about Kesnet here because he has been for a very long time that, you know, the tip of the spear, the ace of this team. I like to use that term. And Bala, I feel like this, you know, you're going to be looking and leaning on him in this one no matter what. Yeah, this is the guy I think that actually, you know, he, he did the things that everybody expected Kesnet to be able to do. And I think coming into the season, you kind of had less stocks on Kesnet. So I think seeing him start off pretty good here in, in kickoff is a really good sign. It absolutely is a big win condition for them the entire season. I think what was so interesting is that they fully like built their style around this guy. It, to me, it felt like the number one priority for crew in kickoff was making Kesnet comfortable, letting him play those lurks, letting him set up for those solo plays. He really was the make or break of the team. Yep. And I think he is a player that when you give him those opportunities, he's going to run with it. But it's still a big risk yep. to put that much stock in one guy. I like that you say the thing about confidence, right? Because I think in the past, it's it's been whether he gets a little sick, whether he gets uh, you know down on himself, that's when crew loses it all, right? Yeah. They go on, you know, not a run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's problems for them. It's when Kesnet has issues finding his confidence, finding his form. That's yeah, and, and that's always going to be difficult, especially when you have a guy with a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, and the thing is, when they've gone on those runs, LCQ champions, it's always been when this guy is in his peak form, when he's playing white hot, that's when crew's their best. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into Kesnitz's play style. We got Ender standing by with a telestrator. What you got for us, buddy? Uh, well, I've just got a few rounds to, to run through with Kesnit here because so much of what crew do is off of where Kesnit is able to put himself and what he can hear within rounds. So right now, we're going to look at one of a, a classic Kesnit lurks on B through Icebox. And it starts out with crew stacking pretty heavily over towards B. Four players here showing a lot of utility in terms of the KO, the Sova, the Viper, and of course, Kesnit dashing over to back yellow. But then from this position, crew sort of frees Kesnit on that side of the map, and they're going to start bringing players over to reinforce their Sentinel on this side of the map. Whoa, we're going crazy. Don't worry about that. All right, so they're going to come back in here as Shy containing over towards A main, finds this opening kill, and Leaf is going to be forced to back away. But the entire time, let's see if we can do better this time around, the entire time, Kesnit is still hanging out over towards that B side of the map. And as these players start flooding in here, especially because G2 have already lost one member, now all of a sudden, Vanity is gonna have to start getting a move on over here as well. So, 
Kesnet still hanging out over towards that B site. Crew start scaling on Ford. Now, Kesnet this entire time hasn't been creeping up too far. He's still hanging out on that side of the map, and he's going to wait until his teammates make contact right here. MTA gets seen. Now watch the mini-map, because now Kesnet is on the prowl. And because Killjoy utility on this map is almost always set up in mid, he's got an opening. And he's able to creep up all the way back into Snowman past Net, get back here, and he hears those footsteps of Net, calls his teammates back over to the B site because he's got the kill, and he's going to keep on looking there because he never slows down. Once he gets his one, he's going to keep looking and try to win out the round. So very nice stuff from him in that one. We're going to move over to Ascent, where he does more of these types of ideas. All right, pause this one out because right now we've got Tesnet working up into mid with a teammate. Now, a lot of times you go mid like this, it can turn into some kind of a split. But what crew do often is they don't commit the spike. So Spike is still back here over towards A. And really all they're doing is getting Kesnet posted up here in mid. Kesnet going to hang out here as a one-way smoke goes into market door. And now crew sort of leave Kesnet to his own device. He hangs out here, and from this position, crew can do one of two things. One is, if Kesnet finds a kill, they can pivot back into him. Right now, the spike is over towards A, but there are options to bring it back into B eventually. The other one is, if Kesnet hears footsteps rotating off of this site, he's going to be able to call his teammates in, and that's exactly what they do, right? G2 are leaning off of the site, but crew don't necessarily know that. What they do know is that three, four, five footsteps just went tr uh, thundering off the B site. Now Kesnet is in there, and he's bringing his teammates over. So it's not even always that Kesnet is finding kills on the game, so much of his calling round to round is off of his position on the, on the map and what the info he knows and he can share with his teams so they can make the correct decision and just break the ankles of their opposition. And that is what makes Crew so unique is all the attention they give Kesnet in the calling. So come on back with me. We can keep talking about the matchup. Oh, yeah. No. Look at that. Hey. Hey. We really got to get the ham horn. We got to get the ham horn. That's our, that's our next sound <laughs> effect. I'm going to work really hard. You know, that, that, that's really interesting because I think... Is it a horn London. made of ham? <laughs> We'll talk later. <laughs> what are you going to say, Paula? <laughs> I want to know more. I don't know. Anyway. What is it? The, ha the ham horn. I'll just go. I'll, I'll find it. I do my whole <laughs> thing over there, and all you've got is ham horn? Okay. What? Uh, all right, all right. Yeah, there we go. We're heavy. See, look at that. Do you uh -huh. see? All right, move the, on with the, your point. The Paul. interesting part about that is, to me, that was, like, things like that, right? Being able to insert, being able to default very well, being able to yeah. call mid-rounds fantastically is what made them go on that run in the first place. And now they're swapping IGLs. I'm really wondering if they're going to lose a little bit of that mm. by swapping off of Melzer. I don't think they do, because I think that when you're a player in that position, you're the one that has to call all the yeah. those rotates, right? He's you have to call, call the info. The yeah. IGL is setting him up for that. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, worried. let's go ahead, though, and look at the other side of the field and talk about their opponents. We got Fiudia, who's also going to be looking to find themselves that big first win, and they're going to be leaning on this guy right here, MW Zera, as they usually do. He has been very much, you know, we talk about the tip of the spear being Kesnet. MW has always been that for this Furia lineup. Coming into this year, I wanted I wanted more from Fury. I wanted more than the MW Zara show. I wanted the rest of the team to step up to see some more unique ideas like we were getting at the beginning of their season last year. But honestly, their kickoff was more of the same. It was MW Zara being a great player, right? He's always going to have these ridiculous rounds that he takes over on his own. But the rest of the team, for my money, wasn't really stepping up in the way that I was hoping. We're still seeing a lot of these rounds where they, they seem a little bit lost in the mid-round, where they're wasting Sky Util, and then they're having to rely yep. on these individual plays to win. And honestly, I think I and probably this team too were expecting a lot more from themselves Absolutely. in that kickoff uh, run. I think for me, this is MW's team. And you could see it in the server, right? Because yeah. every piece of resource is going towards setting him up. And that is the problem, right? You yeah. lose everything else, right? Whatever he has the idea, whenever he's making a call, for example, you see it. I mean, you literally see everybody else trying to keep up with him. And yeah. you can't have that on one player. You need to have everybody else with their own initiative, with their own ability to do sort of plays around the map. And without that, it's it's not a team. It's, yeah. a, it's just MW. Yeah, it, it, that that has always been the the thing that has held them down. Weirdly enough, which is the thing that they have been leaning on to prop them up, right? Which I think is quite ironic in that situation. But then we look forward though to you know the the losses that they have taken since then, and it feels like you know Ender this Furia team they're they're still fishing for that win, and they're fishing for that efficiency that has been missing from this squad for such a long time that they desperately need. Hundred percent. I think genuinely for both of these teams. 
they need to find identity outside of just their duelist players, especially on the attacking side. Because I feel like when Fury are winning a lot of rounds, it's off of letting either on their single or double duelist comps, they're sort of letting those players work the map on opposite sides and find out what they can secure. Uh, it, it feels a little bit less structured. To me, it's very more freestyle rounds, which can be effective, but not when you're trying to reach the highest levels of play. Yeah. I think for me, the thing that gives me some more faith about Fury yeah. is this new kind of changeup with Nosworth coming into the roster. He's been a guy it's who's always been one of my favorite players to watch coming yeah. out of the South American scene. I think on Leviathan last year and even into the early stages of this one, he's a guy who has a lot of ideas in the mid round, mm -hmm. is a big voice for the team, but is also a super consistently high level player. I think he can be that guy yeah. who's not only doing more to set up MWs there, but can be the second and be that second level that Fury has been looking for for so long. Absolutely. And I think part of the reason why he's not on Leviathan right now is because he might have been a little too vocal in some instances. And I think that's going to help fantastically here on yeah. Fury. Yeah. Well, but you know what? Let's go ahead and hear from Nas, where he's actually standing by with Geek Heavy. Check it out. Nas, we're right over here. Now, I got to ask you, what are team expectations now that you join the team? Quais as expectativas que você tem agora que você... Quais as expectativas, as expectativas do time agora que você jun... se juntou? A expectativa é a gente montar uma nova estrutura para o time, né? A gente, obviamente, classificar para o playoff. Mas pensar em cada jogo, né? Cada semana a gente tem um plano de jogo novo para cada adversário. E minha expectativa é isso. Pelo menos na primeira etapa a gente chega no playoff. Yeah, the, the expectations is to create a new structure in the team to reach the, the playoffs. But of course, every game is a, is a new battle. So we'll be we working on that. Awesome. Good luck today. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that is the plan. The idea is to create a new identity for this team. And, you know, it, look, it was looking like we weren't going to get to see Nasr play this year, but. It's nice that he's yeah. here. He's going to be competing, and that's huge. That interview, that's exactly what I wanted <laughs> to hear from this yeah. team. They have needed a new structure. They have, they've needed someone to, like, shock them awake and bring new ideas into the squad for so long. Honestly, Nas joining this team is the most excited I've been about Furia since the very beginning of the America's League. Yeah, uh, back back last year when Digits In was farming. That's the sort of thing I was excited for. Yeah, no, I mean, that might have been the most uh, impactful arrival interview I think I've ever had here. On <laughs> he didn't plug the bundle. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, yeah. miracle. What a frost. Well, a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what, what you need, and that's what I was talking about in terms of him being vocal, right? Uh, he needs to be able to add a little bit more and also shut down uh, some certain things that are going on within, within the team. I, I need to see a little bit of control taken away from MW to allow him to be the person that he needs to be the most out of yeah. anything. I also think it's really beneficial, uh, especially when you are someone that's bringing ideas into a team, that you pro have proven flexibility and you play a lot of different agents. I think that is just, for me, a clear signifier that you have deep understanding and you can actually come in and bring ideas into a playbook. Because going back to what I was saying earlier, that's what I felt like was missing for Fury, is the rounds felt so freestyled, and I want to see them come in with much more deliberate plans from the get-go. My biggest question is how bought in is this team to Nas mm -hmm. new system? How committed are they? to these new ideas? Are we going to see people falling into the comfort, the old mistakes we've been seeing? Or is this a team that is ready to reinvent themselves? Yeah. I mean, look, if I got o 2 twice in a row, I would buy into whatever system someone was selling me that wasn't the system where we just got smacked twice and sent home. It's kind of hard, though, when you, when you come into a season and make a plan, right? And then it's not starting to work out. It's like, ooh, I, I think I can make this work. That's the sort of thing that you have to convince. I think only yeah. to me, I think just from the outside looking in, just MWs. Yeah. Yeah, I like how Nasr is coming into this as like, you know, I could fix him. You know, he's got, he's got that energy to him. And I support him on that. I definitely do. Let's go ahead, though, and head over to the map select and find out where we are headed today against these two teams. Hi, guys. Welcome to day three. As you know, teams were decided via coin flip. Furia will be team A and crew will be team B. Furia, you will have first map ban. Uh, ban split. Furia ban split. What would you like ban bind. Crew ban bind. What would you like to pick? Pick a Lotus. If you pick Lotus, would you like attack or defense? Attack. Crew pick attack, and what map would you like? Icebox. Crew pick icebox, and would you like attack or defense? Um, attack. If you pick attack, and you have one map ban. Um, ban sunset. If you ban sunset, and you have one map ban. We ban ascent. Crew ban Ascent. The side of map is going to be Breeze, and you will have attack or defense? Attack. 
for your pick attack. All right, guys, best of luck today. I think this map select is so interesting because it's three maps that are very, very default heavy. Right away, you have Lotus. That's when I think that crew came in LCQ really successfully with. And then you have Breeze and Icebox, which you broke down a roundabout where Kesnick can kind of work around. I think both teams think that that's their identity, and I think it kind of is. And a ton of lurk opportunities on all the maps, like two jet maps as well, tons of lurk options too. Like, this feels like it plays very much, like you're saying, into their bread and butter. Yeah, this is going to be really fun to see how this all breaks down. But for more on this matchup, it's Go ahead and send it over to Mimi, who's standing by with some very special guests. Before the games today, I wanted to chat a little bit about Crew and Fury with some of our friends from the other VCT Americas broadcast. I'm joined by RKT from our LATAM broadcast and Spaka from the Brazilian broadcast. Thank you guys both for joining me. Before we get into this one, I want to ask a little bit about some of the changes coming to these two rosters. RKT Crew for a long time has been this LATAM only roster, and now they're picking up Heat, kind of subbing him in for this stage. What do you make of the new changes for Crew? I think it will be very useful. They think on fix the things faster, and he had the experience to change the role and do really good with them. So I, I see a good future for Screw. What does uh, the Brazilian scene feel about seeing one of their own kind of go over and play on another team? Because we've had this sw switch away, switcheroo a few times already with yeah. Sadat basically being a Brazilian player at this point, but now Heat doing the same. I think Brazilians are rooting for Heat, even he plays in a uh, crew, because when he left for MyBR, it's not about gameplay, it's all about uh, convince sure. about other players. There, so he deserves a spot in the International League. Well, Nosworth as well is kind of making a switch. Now he's going over to Furia. RKT, what do you think that he as a player could bring to that squad? Well, it's an EGL. Then that's really, really important. I think Furia, one of the lacking points that they have what's the organization. And I think that his experience, also he already had played a lot in Furia and will bring a lot to them. Oh, I think I know who both of you guys are probably predicting or rooting for in this match. Okay. But I, I wanted to hear the pitch. Why is Fury the team that's going to win today? I think um, Nauser uh, um, play uh, side of MW0 is going to be better from Fury because he's much aggressive. And I feel like the other players from Fury are not going to be the follow up if MW0. So Nauser and MW going to crush crew. Finally, some help for MW. That's, yeah. That's a good yeah. sign. All right. What's, what's your argument for crew, Rocky? Uh, I think that the change from Klaus to be an NGL, Melzer doing a much better like individual and mechanical skills. And now you have a Kesnit who will be playing with Heat and like that first impact that it will have will be really, really important. Okay, well, we could wait for the match to decide who's going to win or we could do something better. I hear you guys both pretty good at the Valorant game. Yeah, it's true. maybe. You've, you've been sometimes. a competitor before, you know, yeah. RKT, you're ready. What if we decided on a 1v1? I, I instead? was Silver 2, but now I'm a Gold 2. So I He's think leveling no up. Yeah. It's going to be a tough challenge. Well, let's hop over to <laughs> let's the computers. Go, let's go. And let's, let's get the real game underway. We have one round between these two with their team's classics on one side of Sunset. Okay. I'm excited to see how this one's going to go. Let's hop into it. Oh, you're rolling up your sleeves already. You're getting sweaty. Yeah. So two different agents here. <laughs> okay. So, so I think I won. I think he's cheating. I think you won. Yeah. yeah. Just, is that a Furia Classic tip yeah. with the double dink instantly? Shooting, man. RKT, what happened? I was using my skills to the execute, but my team didn't help me. That's <laughs> where was that team? Uh, yeah. Is that going to happen today with crew? Yeah. No, I wish not, man. That's going to be, man. Furia going to crush crew. Okay. Like this way. That's all I need to see. Back to the desk. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> I was quick. <laughs> Damn. I'm pretty sure the, the team didn't help me. That's a that's a Kesnet line in there, too. <laughs> Oh, man, RKT. shout out to Spaka and RKT uh, from our Portuguese as well, our uh, Brazilian as well as uh, uh, Latin American uh, broadcast. Big shout out to them. Go ahead and check them out. Um, yeah, guys, this is it. I mean, we're coming down to the wire here. We're going to be starting the game in a moment. Kind of want to get some thoughts, predictions, because this is a... I would say it's a kind of a tough one to predict. I, I don't really know where it lands, you're but to pigeonhole us like Mimi did with them. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, yeah, you're going with Fury. <laughs> Tell me why. <laughs> you defend them with your honor. All right, well, what do you got? Uh, I got, I got, I got my boys. Actually, oh, you needed a nice. smiley face. Yeah, look at that. That's nice, but it's the it's the wrong color. Cause I'm I'm all I'm all crew. That, so you that guys is are pink, all crew. In case you're wondering, you guys yeah. are you guys uh, are going for crew. Okay, look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I am a Kesnit believer. And I genuinely think that Kesnick can a just... a believer? Bat 
No, I'm a Kesnet believer. Like, I, I did the whole little thing over there with the breakdown. Like, come on. I think it's fair. You put a lot of stock in it. shit of breakdowns for Kesnet, and I'm like, oh, I think crew are going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that, right? You know? Yeah, so, it, it, but if, if Furia are to pick up this win, I, I feel like it would be off of the backs of, you know, of what Nosworth Look, can bring to this team. Honestly, eventually. what I saw already in that interview, I'm kind of shifting my expectation a little bit here. I, I, it de really depends what I see in this first game for Furia, yeah. but my stocks have never been lower. Um, but after this, maybe they'll start to rise rapidly rather than just kind of being lukewarm. Yeah, yeah. Time. I won't believe it till I see it. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I'd like love it. to see it. Right. We could very well see it today. Well, folks, we only got one match today. Two teams are ready to take the stage, and one is going to start the stage with a big win. Who's it going to be? Is it Crew or will it be Furia? Day three of VCT America starts right now. Could it be? Informação do Riaz estava tentando marotar o MW deu a volta e na Ultimate! A Cru é um time muito agressivo, assim, que tipo, quando vai jogando e as coisas vão dando certo, eles ficam hypados com isso e acaba dando mais certo ainda. É, eu acho que a gente tem que parar isso e não deixar acontecer pra gente sair com essa vitória. Bueno, é uma equipe que já conhecemos. É, nos enfrentamos durante a Liga do ano passado e também no Dachshund. E creo que tenemos mucho familiarizado con ellos porque sabemos su estilo de juego y nada, yo tengo mucha fe de que podemos enfrentar, de enfrentarlo de buena manera y ganar el primer partido. Yo creo que la cosa más importante para poner a Cruz es que es Nietzsche, es un jugador que consigue cuando está impactando, impactando bastante. Pues ya en él, son jugadores muy buenos, eh, mostrando siempre buenos, buenos performances en la liga. Creo que la mayor fuerza del time de la Furia es la Mira, es un time muy mirudo. E dentro do servidor eles reagem muito ao mapa, então acho que, que seja isso. Bom, acho que a gente vai ganhar esse jogo porque a gente está treinando muito, está se dedicando muito. Eu acho que, que é isso, eu acho que a recompensa vai ser essa, ganhar deles. Riot Games Arena, vamos dar início e receber o primeiro time no palco, porque hoje é dia de Fúria! Work hard, 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 work hard
struggled in the inaugural season, but now here they're looking to turn the page on a new chapter. For Crew Visa, it could be a big opportunity for them to really just get that first win in a regular season that they have been fishing for for a long time. And then on the other side for Furia, well, this is a team that's on the rebuild that's looking to come up with new ideas and a new identity, and today could very well be their day. Here we go. Got a conspiracy theory oh boy. for you guys. Here we go. Shadok, Argentinian, okay. playing in Brazil. Here we are. Loud, best Brazilian team of all time. Yes. By an Argentinian. Hear me out. Now, we have Nosworth, Argentinian, going over. Playing in Brazil. Oh. Playing with She's cooking. She's cooking. What, what's oh, next? Man. What's next? Nosworth's already on this team. <laughs> yeah. But he's back now. It's the second coming of Nosworth. I mean, that doesn't it's, mean that it's they're going to go to champions. It's going to be good this time. Because it's been the same thing. Look, my counterpoint is work hard, play hard. That is a good point. But, but in all seriousness. <laughs> what? <laughs> Were you listening to the song, Dave? Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Sorry. No, but I really do think Nosworth can be the guy to yeah. reignite this furious squad. I, I think he's going to be a very vocal member of this squad who can really help them to find that new idea, identity, to start to reinvent themselves. And I think that's absolutely necessary to get themselves out of the, like, funk they've been in for the last almost year now. And it's entirely possible that we do see a large shift coming in in day one, but my expectations for this match is that it is going to be so much, especially with the map pool, going to be about the mid-rounding and finding where can you actually seize those gaps in the enemy play. The duels on both sides like to get very, very active. We talked about Kesnet finding those lurk timings. So for me, while yes, having that shift would be a great sign for the future, this match to me has always been about getting down and getting a little scrappy yep. in the mid-round. Absolutely. I think that's what you saw when these two teams played against each other last year as well. And for me, I'm looking at Heat. This guy hasn't been on the stage in a long time. Uh, in the last iteration of MIBR, when he was playing last year, he ended up floundering out, right? He was very exciting, yeah. very electric. Many people were excited about him, and then he just kind of fizzled out. And yes, he was injured last year, but now he's a lot of time to rest, to reflect, to figure out how exactly he's going to bring it to the stage and how he's going to end up being back on this stage in a permanent more role. The learning is the big thing for me with this guy. What did he learn from kind of parting ways with MIBR with how it all went down last year with some conflicts within that team? How is he reflected on himself as yeah. a player? And what is he going to now bring into this new roster for him? Because it's not going to be the same deal with MIBR. IBR. He cannot have another team built around him because you already have so many resources going to Kesnet. I think he's going to have to shift to being a lot more of a flexible guy, probably playing on that KO role. He'll still have to be aggressive. He'll still take those risks. You're still heat, but it is going to be very different than what he's used to. Kind of feels like uh, a little bit of what we were talking about regarding like cryo and tens. Ace players, guys who were like the duelists on their team, great aimers migrating into a more supportive role now as their career kind of like I, I don't want to say like winds down but as they themselves you know start to see themselves more as foundational pieces rather than the whole show I do think we are reaching a point in Valorant where there are a lot of players that initially came out as duelists that are transitioning into other roles uh, but I think in this case of course we are uh, just going for that swap into MTA so it's unclear whether or not for me he, thing, yeah. that wants to yeah. be a full switch for him but or this could uh, be even, the start for that yeah or even if they do try to play uh, some, some du double duelist maps, potentially on Breeze later I as mean, well. right away, right? The fade, exactly kind of what Mimi, you were expecting more so than anything else. And here, this is Lotus, right? So, yeah, it looks like, I think mo both of these teams are teams that always stick with the traditional. They don't necessarily go far out in the meta, except Crew maybe last year at the beginning when they uh, experimented with a little bit of Neon on this sure. map. Uh, I, I but even then, they moved away from that pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, very fast. And I, I do think it's pretty surprising to see Nasr actually going back into the sky. Almost every team has moved over to the fade on this map. That sky now not having rechargeable flashes. It makes it a lot harder to cycle you to get info on the defense like you used to with that agent. Yeah, sky is way more committal if you're using a sky flash to fight for early space initially. It is way more committal than just a haunt, for example. Which makes me think that could be some more of the same, right? Where they're going for these committed forward pushes, really putting it all into MW. That's kind of how you have to play with new Scott. Yeah, I, I'm really interested to see at the end of this too whether Kesson is going to go for a raise or if he's going to play a jet because a lot of times he's a great race player, but a lot of times he picks jet on maps where it shouldn't necessarily. He's be got the race. Yeah, got the I race. like We're his good. raise better though. Me Last too. year that LCQ run, it was built on the raise maps. It was built on this guy. I think finding a slightly different style. His jet is a lot like what you were talking about, Christy, where he's lurking, he's flying off on his own. When he's on this race, you do get a lot more kind of classic style of these fast, fiery execs. 
and up against MW Zara. It's going to be fun to watch. Let's get this match underway. Send it over to your casters, who are two ranked demons, I've heard. Spencillian Rivington. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Indeed, we are some ranked demons, and maybe not the highest rank that we want. I think we're some like top 500,000 or something, right? But go. yeah, Kuro Visa versus Furia today is going to be a great series. I think I do agree as well with what the desk was mentioning when they set up the stage. I need to believe it when I'm going to see it. From whose side? I mean, somebody's going to have to win today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, already, this is a game that requires the ham horn to be pulled out. <laughs> so get out your ham horns because we're about to get on to Lotus and see what these two teams have for stage one. What are the changes? We, we heard they've both been refreshed. They're feeling good. Some of these lock-ins that they now feel like could be the answer to woes they faced last season. It's all going to be with what they can show us, though. We can speculate as much as we want. And we see coming into this, not uh, pretty much everybody on a buy except the two classics, Havoc and Khalil, as they take this A, mount, or a main control. Walls down, there's first contact, and crew on the attack will answer first, and that's from the newest IGL Klaus. But quickly, we have trades going back and forth. Havoc instantly becomes the last player standing on the defensive side of Furia and has to rotate all the way from the C to A against three players here of Crew Visa. Spike planted. A tall task for Havoc, and very quick play to start off from Crew. No hesitation. They also didn't see too much util thrown back at them as they, they entered into A. So felt pretty good about taking that space. This one will fizzle out. One last alt point if Havoc can't just kind of deny everything here. Does want to make a little bit of noise though. He wants to force the hand out of crew. Yeah. Who still has utility left to use that heat now in a new initiator role. Switching away from the duelist to be that support for Kesnit. <laughs> we'll be able to group together with the rest of crew visa and they'll answer first in this series. Like Furia had the strat that was pretty set to stop crew there, but I don't think Furia believed it would happen as, as quickly as it did. As soon as that wall dropped, door was open, but still two shots from Klaus quickly able to capitalize on that space gain. And that kind of just throws the entirety of Furia's defense into discombobulation. No coming back from that one. The Sheriff's still there for MW Zera with the buy. And it's going to be three Vandals and a Guardian. Crew is just going to put a smack down in this round. They want to get through this as flawless as possible. Keep all that money on their side. Pillar push coming in from Furia just to gauge the pressure of the map so far. And they do realize Crew is taking this slow, waiting back on their own side of the map to start here. The only thing that's difficult there with what Furia was doing here is that they didn't even get the, tur the turret down towards that B spawn. Which then means it's easier for crew to rotate around if they need to, but again, you've mentioned it, Riv. They have Vandals in their arsenal working inside this A site. Oh. Usually you'd say it's easier to fight there and move forward, but Nosworth is answering back with the Sheriff. Klaus missing a few, closing the gap is Nosworth's dog, trying to push forward to at least try to punish Klaus, who then decides to fall back. And for crew visa, at least they'll plant the spike over at A. Trying to identify where miss some of these guns are, if they can even get one. <laughs> Yeah, it seems a little bit far here towards the orb, but at least just like the beginning of the round, it's a walk contact down. Wall then comes down. Nosworth walking through, trying to get wall bangs, picking up that Vandal and also a Guardian. Changing now the times. Potential for crew to win this comeback. Door being open to try to fight and clear towards tree, but all of crew are holding back at the top of heaven in the back of the site, although not planning for them, watching the angles. And the last two players of Furia Looking to die the spike and also potentially save the Guardian or do some damage, rather. And they'll catch one. That's Klaus to fall. Conan decides to not give his life away, at least to his opponents. Oh, Nas. Nas were caught on the heels there, had a Vandal. But gonna go down with that one. Furia putting up quite a fight here in these first few, first few rounds to give Crew some trouble. And those Vandals definitely telling of how Crew kind of just wants to get the wins on this one. Yeah, and there's that stat right there. First time they were seen Heat as a non-dualist agent. And again, that's that question mark and what was being brought up by Spaka over on the Brazilian broadcast. That he's pretty much there to support Kesnit. Maybe Heat will be the glue 
to Kesnitz's opening, but also that's still great firepower that they add yeah. into the arsenal of crew here in this matchup today. I feel like we're, as we see a little bit of C mountain control, we're just in this era of a, a lot of the fraggers, a lot of the marksmen that we see in our league. Quick shot towards heaven here. Like, Tens goes back onto an omen. Heat goes back onto something. Kind of just a reset, right? Rethink of the role, but still the same firepower. Leaf onto a sentinel now. Just across the board. Seems like a lot of these players with firepower and star power are getting a chance to reset on a different agent. See how it works out for them. Now into this bonus round. Money still slightly there for crew to get these vandals online still as they head back towards C with a nice little breadcrumb and shy lurking at that breakable door. Definitely a change of tempo right now for Crew. They initiated first with the lurk now, regrouping four players back in. Khalil able to fall back, but only surviving with two HP. Quickly moving forward as Nos were on the rotate with MW0 to try to get the heal back up with the regrowth in. He'll be topped back up to 100, but while you're staying back and healing yeah. up your teammates, it gives a chance left. to Crew to just walk in and get this plant down. Heat gets this plant, they have a Nightfall as well. Oh my word. Look at this lurk coming in all the way through the back. If they time this perfectly, it's big kills for Shy. And that's gonna ping all players, making it very difficult to hear anything, giving a chance for the flank to happen. Not needed as of yet. Azal of crew are dominating Furia. All four kills out of five. Up to Star Duel is tested. They don't even need the lurk either. That was just kind of icing on the cake. If they do go down in sight in the chaos, boom. You have the safety net in Shy's lurk, but yeah. Kesnit feeling a lot of these kills to come through. Great defense, the 4K, the showstopper very close to coming online. It's exactly what you want to see from Kesnit starting off the stage. <laughs> the fans still there. Just building up this energy that crew can use to keep this momentum, pushing that bonus round to a victory, and now they go back to a little bit of the slow style, reading how Furia may have a defense set up. And Furia doesn't want to show anything yet. A little bit of shots that came through from the staircase at the beginning of the round for Nas were, but for Crew, they still have to figure out where the stack is. A very passive setup on the C site for information. A crossfire setup on B and a three-player stack on A site for the defensive side. As there is that utility coming out, try to, trying to flush out those defenders. The first piece of util on defense now finally gets hurt, and it's the dog coming out from Noswer. Crew's starting to feel that there's maybe more than just one player around after seeing that initiator utility. Yeah, I think Kesnit's given the call. It's like, I don't feel like it's safe blast packing through that. You're only entering through tree. Now they start to separate those first holds. What a big read. What a big... Fake being done, breaking yeah. door one satchel, and already all of Furia rotates out of A, making it a lot harder for them to retake the site now with only these pistols. I mean, there's a couple of stairs as well. One enemy but remaining. they can't close the gap, they can't use that weapon to their advantage. Khalil is the last player standing, at least gets one for his troubles before he falls to Klaus. And you called it. As soon as everyone in tree on crew identifies, right, that's you till from one, two, three. Okay, there's at least three here. Probably some lurkers, you get Kesnit to blast through the door just to pull that A defense off their, their original holds, get them out of position, and you see crew crash back in. Really nice push and pull there. That is just key to being able to uproot your, your opponents in their defensive spots. And still going back to A, they did not fear the fact that the stack was going to be there. So confidence in crew's plays, they're behind each other. And they continue to take these sites with power. We'll get a timeout here for Furia to re reset. Still looking to make this defense hit crew and make crew worry about it. The extremity pushes from Furia have been stopped at mound. They don't get too much pressure. And then that kind of resets. There really hasn't been too much of a push towards A. And you, you only have the nade to throw from that defensive side. So you can't really set up the C's nade or getting somebody locked up. That's a great point, actually, Riv, because, yes, they've added pressure on the C-mount, but on the A-side, there was never that big pressure of rubble. Yeah. And even though they had those players on C-mount and no, there was no opposition, you didn't want to continue to move forward to fight info. You just rotated around and stacked, and when you have no info on the A-side either, 
you could get your players caught there with right. what we saw Khalil alone on that C mound. So there's not enough real that minute mark utility being used here by Nas or to try to get that mid rounding call of perfect read into the mid round as Cruz doing a great job at that. Although on their end on the Time attack, they're shown, they've shown a lot of their strategies so far in the first four rounds. Swamp grenade. It seems like Fury will try to figure Swamp this one out, out with that push C again, and it is. This A strap, the comfort in taking the alt orb, getting to that spot, Klaus gets pit, and they're ready to go wherever they decide to end this round. No, it goes to Kesnit. Oh, I didn't well, realize he was one off. Yeah, obviously Kesnit gets it. So much more pressure added by the showstopper. And I like that. So off the timeout of Furia, they actually went for the dog for that information gathering. Sees nobody towards that B side. They know the engagement is now towards A after realizing that Kesnit has the showstopper. Plant will come down, but at least Furia is all grouped up together. Yeah. This gives them a chance to flood a little bit faster. And for a lurk to happen, actually, it's going to be a full TP from Khalil over at Hobbit. I'll try to break the door and go for a double swing, but there's a lot of players of Kuru Visa just on the other side. First contact will be Heat. Throws utility inside the door, and it's just beautiful there. Very hard for Furia to move out. Now Khalil on the 1v1. At least gets two. Last player standing. Oh. Now up to Nosware. Latest addition to the roster. Tapping on that spike. I mean, the players are far. It's halfway. He's trying to full stick it. And Melzer just goes for the drive-by. Easy kill as we have five now unanswered rounds for Crew Visa. Crew comes flying through. And the way they're preventing the retakes must be so annoying for Furia. The way that Baby Door was held. Kesnitz hugging Baby Door. So as he draws the paranoia, Kesnitz can still see as they come through. Really, the big mind games. Sight's given a little bit of space, but they're easy, uh, easily able to come around. Stop the defuse, stop it all. Five in a row now for Crew. Back to a low buy for Furia. And they're looking for a little bit of A control this time. Kesnet just absolutely dropping Havoc to start this off. And no, the only thing he needed to do for Havoc was try to jiggle Peek for some information. But right. as soon as he jiggles, boom, owned by Kesnet, who hasn't skipped a beat here. Since their run after LCQ. Now goes for a plant, farming these orbs for the attacker as well as crew. Kesnet very close to another showstopper. Three away. And really all of crew set up on this post plant playing inside the site as well. Furia, I mean, you're going to have to try to do something with these stingers. Unless they get a quick kill or two, those seekers should not be coming out. But they're getting fully delayed by beautiful yeah. utility by Klaus in the end with those snake bites. Smoke coming through. What really can you do? Wait, the crash. Yeah. The There's just so much delay. Oh, they're going to push. Hello. <laughs> Try to farm that up a bit. I mean, you've done the damage. You're trying to do the damage. There's just too much in terms of economy. Well, nice free transfer, by the way, there for Heat. But there's just so much economy right now for yeah, Kuru Visa. They don't say. mind going through. I mean, you'll buy the next round. You get alt orbs if you die. You get alt orbs if you get kills. Even Kuru uh, Heat is already almost at the nightfall. That was just throwing bags of money at the problem. Yeah. Honestly, just <laughs> went spawn and like throw bags of money at it. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah, so th that's ridiculous from Crew because with that kill, they skirt the push from A from Furia. Had we not had Havoc go down there, then Crew may hear that push from A. Then they have to respect it. Wait, they could get into our spawn. They're pushing, but since Havoc goes down, Fury is just straight into sight, and the push that did happen A is left too far behind. Crew just one step ahead, whether they know it or not. The shots are making it happen and everything fall into place. Heat gets up on tonight. Fall. Klaus, another first blood coming from him. He just walked through. Opening Sorry. up the round. Yeah, he walked through just the one way that was being thrown there on the defense and just decides to creep up and gets an entry like that. This was an opportunity for Furia to get their first point on the board. As the swing round comes in with two important ults on their ends and a rifle round. But instantly, as you just mentioned, now they play at a one-player disadvantage. It just seems like Furia doesn't have any control of that defensive side, right? Every angle, every peak is feeling super comfortable for Crew. And when they do find Furia members, they're just looking at the wrong angle. Here towards Tree, and a splash through the wall. See if they can make an impact on A. Furia trying with four now. There's a push there is towards that baby door. Shy gets the pick. MW0 now pops up the showstopper, lands it on Klaus. And manages to stay alive here at 21 HP. Tw uh, three on three. 
As Conan is trying to move in with the rest. Melzer pushing up to the staircase. Getting two kills holding the A site. That's back to a one versus one. Conan versus Heat. Looking down as Heat. Getting that pick on Conan. Look at the wrong area, rather. It it's wild. You can almost see the chaos in Furia's retake. Well, they, they know what they're doing. They're still not sure of the timing. Where's crew going to be? What are they going to do this time? We haven't figured out an answer of the last one. They could be doing something wild, and they usually are. These pushes into Baby Door, catching Nazwar off. These forces up towards heaven, and they continue to push that position, too. We'll see here. Unfortunately, looking down, thinking yeah. that Cohen, um he was actually close there, but I was going to mention, to add on to what you were saying, they, they used Seekers as well at that minute mark. They right, got some information, right. but there was no support there as well to help MW0 with the showstopper retake. A little bit temporary right now on those retakes as well, and not anticipating the Shy Lurks, which now results to a 7-0 to zero score line for Crew Visa so far. And this is even one of the first rounds where Furia has crew on their own side. They were able to get the, the sky dog or sky guiding light and a nade here. So applying a little bit of pressure. But is crew sweating yet? Up 7-0, you just have to figure out where they're defending and how they're doing it. And that's a good start from Conan. Yeah. Whoa. Finally, they could start sweating a bit. Yes. Not only because they have heat in the roster, but there are also two players behind in this round number eight. Yet Shy still trying to get an opening, trying to get a lurk. Sees the high low off the contact of the turret, stays alive. Now here comes the other lurk on the A site, where Klaus is trying to move up with heat. Unfortunately, those numbers continue to dwindle down. It's only fitting to fit the script that we currently have here on a 7 0 scoreline with these two teams. 30 seconds. He gets a timing. MW0 falls, but there's still a player at the top of heaven. And he's playing it alone, One getting off the remaining. spike, hurt the footsteps, Spikes but couldn't look up on B. time. It's up to Shy now. It's going to be difficult. There's 15 seconds left. I think that's pretty much it. You're going to have to save here, and we stick to the script. Let's think, yeah, Ten money's still left. there for crew. The 7-1 comes in, and we look at what this means for the, the future rounds. Is this fight coming in? Havoc ready? No, maybe not. Next time. Uh, we see what this might mean. The lockdown is there. The pit for Conan coming up with a good amount of frags this round. Havoc. One to boot. Doesn't matter. Already has it, but he'll put the KDA in his pocket. Um, now they have a retake ability, and this needs to get through Crew's economy, right? We just talked about how much bank they have. And these big opening frags from Conan set the pace of the round. The first round that Freery was able to dictate. Another reason Nazwar was able to get a kill over at Stairs because Crew did not have the initial setup they usually do. I like the call. It looked kind of weird, maybe from our perspective, that Shy just went in at one second left to <laughs> time, but you're getting 1,900 in terms of your right. bonus instead of 1,000. And at the same time, it was probably a call from Klaus to say, hey, you could die, we could try to control an orb and give you an ult as well, and you'll have three strong ults to really try to cycle those for the rest of the half. And you could definitely see it here. Crew trying to focus towards that B main, but could late pivot towards the door if they want yeah. to, because they have the turret to watch this C mount push. Shadows traveling. Instead, it's a full pivot back towards A. Yeah, this is a new look Fury is getting now, but they're responding really well with their hold so far. Backing up to play it safe. And quickly skirting in to breakable. MW Zera repositions a little. See, previously Crew would have had one or two, a few kills here when this wall drops. But this is what Fury is doing a lot better now here. Trying to make this a 7-5 first half. And they also want to try to pull these defenders out towards this A side so potentially Kesne could get an entry with the showstopper towards B. Then you break the door, finish towards that B site. Instead, you don't use the showstopper, but you still try to open that door and finish there towards oh. baby door. There is that showstopper being heard. Keset holding it back, but as they're trying to escape, there is the pinch on the other end. And Furia players on the defense are falling down like a house of cards. <laughs> There's only Khalil leave. left. Yeah, yeah, they're going everywhere they want. They're going they leave, everywhere they want. He comes back. What is? They're just playing mind games, man, silly. Ten seconds left. Spike planted. Yeah, Kuru Visa seems to have any entry that they want here. Either it's working towards this B site, A, slow pushes towards C. There's really no answer yet to Furia, but I think it's to what we were mentioning before at the beginning yeah. of this game. In the four rounds that we've seen so uh, at the beginning of this game, there were so many different looks that we've seen from Kuru.
It was or pushes for rubbles, some lurks, doors not breaking, Shy gets a backstab. So Fudio is consistently guessing this whole time. Nope. In round nine, as I poke the screen, <laughs> round nine, they go towards B to start to mess things up a little bit and leave Kesnet there as the breadcrumb to then be the attack later. Almost the spearhead of the attack as he opens up with first blood, finalizes with three. And a save here from Khalil. Eight to one now. His crew starts with a punishing eight rounds. Only to be stopped just a few ago, but take it right back in their favor. Yeah, they so tough to cover all these angles. Again, crew just a little faster on the timing than Furia is even expecting. That's why it's just blindsiding every one of these members. That lockdown is still there. Need LMS from Havoc here to be last man standing so they can get this into positions, play a little bit of retake. It is going to be a judge by with some vandals. And they still won't get too much rubble control. Pillar, just a default now from Crew to read kind of this portion of the first half where they're not sure what fear you might do on a buy. Yeah. And that's a death mention as well. Maybe potentially Nosworth could be the one fixing NWZ right now in this mm -hmm. current iteration of Furia. But they haven't really been sticking together like glue here at this point. And as I say that, there is that pivot. A walk contact, there's noise being made. Melzer's playing it close. Does have support as well from Shy. So for Crew Visa side, they're just trying to beta, play the bait and try to force them out. He gets the entry. Oh my gosh. He gets the entry with the spike on his back. That's how much confidence that they have right now in this game for Crew Visa. No matter where they go, they're winning every single duel as well. He then gets another one. What? Oh, actually, it's traded out by Shy Long Range. It, it, it seems like a little bit of desperation plays. Everybody's trying to get that kill, yeah. but still crew is thinking about that. They're guarding each other. They're not making the mistake that would allow that kill. And Furia falls to the wayside in so many 1v1s that last the trade, as you said. And now they push MW Zera here. I, mean, gets, I was gonna say, pad some stats if yeah. you get more judge kills. But I'd like to see that a little bit more from Furia. There's only a couple rounds left here in the half, and they've been trying to play very meticulously, trying to read yeah. how Crew's currently playing. I'd like to see maybe sometimes don't give them that respect. And see if sometimes if you're just going to run less as Death Ball, if you get those trades in, that could give you a lot of confidence to start something. Yeah. And that is smart now for your first half, for your first map, and your opening game here at the VCD Americas in 2024. It, it's, it's really coming down to flicks and firepower at this point. I mean, if, if we go back over the roster and you see the additions, right? Heat is in there now. That initiator has just as much frag as you would want on your duelist. Kesnitz there being the duelist. Klaus has the opening kills of the control you wouldn't expect because the team's with the Viper at that point. It's not Klaus lurking, it's Klaus being on the front of some of these strats with everyone at A. So, yeah, crew is finding the firepower everywhere they need it here, and it's just stunting Furia at every entrance. Timeout. Furia to reset once more here for your first half, and a 9-3 is still possible as they get some buys in here with low armor in. Khalil's got that Sheriff, a lockdown still to be used, which shows you the speed one that Crew's playing at, how much they keep flexing Furia back onto low buys, but the round of that I was talking about where there's playing with speed, Fury is not in position to say, yeah, lockdown will be good here. No, we already lost one or two. We, we can't afford to use it this round. They literally aren't getting the chance to use it because Crew is decimating. Yeah. And those chances need to be given as opportunities by winning these single duels. There's a lot of these moments where even crew activates early control of lurks yeah. and opening attempts, yet still being won on the attack side here of crew visa. And off this timeout, four players now on this A side. Heavy rubble control attempt. Maybe even positioning just like the piss around, but yes, it's definitely going to be the, going to be the paranoia, rubble control, start one way, but look at what crew's doing. Just running in. Although there's an instant rotate from two players of Furia just by the Hobbit door. One being damaged, forced to fall back, healing up. Lockdown, potentially in position towards the waterfall, but he's going to be alone here for Havoc. And he only has a sheriff to defend this win. 
All right. Stand silly. All right. All right. Okay, Nasler. Nasler answers back at least. That's three on his own. Pulls out the Seekers. One of them will get potentially get the team, though. As he makes it out on time, that's Khalil. Just enough. And Melzer. 2v2. Both Omens alive. One CP coming out from Khalil. Instantly gets cancelled. They have information of where Melzer's at. Nasler inside the pit of that B site. Trying to get the tap on his bike, but tries just watch the main. One versus one, they have info, the alarm bot's there too. And now Shy's just gonna oh, play the time, but that's a nice shot. That's gonna make him guess a bit. Shy's gonna have to play a little bit more patiently, and now there's not enough time. Not at all. 10-1 to the scoreline for Crew Visa. Flying away with this game. Second round that Crew decides Last to hit B, in and this half. time, it is fierce. They do not stop. Once they get that U-tilt broken, Melzer TPing into sight, being able to cover the other enter. That's yeah, rinse and repeat here for Crew on a lot of these rounds. And the games that Shy is able to play to secure this one on to Khalil. We go to round 12 now of the first half. Night falls here for Heat. They were able to get the lockdown used and whatnot. MW Zero with ultimate to push back at first. Mountain Control is going to be the name of the game to start. It looks like Crew wants to fight it. Melzer just went for a jump spot and saw Khalil yeah. trying to play the off angle on the left side of mound, and now the smoke comes down on the attack, and that control that you're trying to bring, and the surprise attack from Buria, potential will get stopped. You saw NW Zero was tucked in behind those wooden boxes, getting rid of the showstopper in case there was a heavy pressure from Crew. Yet they open the door, they're trying to create some sort of paranoia, and try to pinch and push aggressively. Nice little change, what we wanted to see. Yet Klaus is doing the same on the other end. Beautiful angle held by Havoc. They finally score first in a round with a player advantage. In to see they go. Finally stopping Klaus on the lurk. Nice splash to allow MW0 to come out with a showstopper to connect with two. That spike down. One player left alive, Melzer, low HP. Against a full roster. And a silver lining for Furia. The end of half with the flawless, but trailing behind by eight. Switching sides. Crew came to play today. I don't know if there was more, uh, much more to say there. Really controlling the first bloods, dictating how the rounds are going. And they let Furia know this is not going to be an easy series. Yeah, definitely not. At this point, too, Crew Visa. Again, had full control of everything going around uh, on their attack side. But on the, I'd like to think that now, like Lotus, if you're playing in those compositions that, you know, Bala said, it's more traditional. You might see some, yeah. some, some life coming out of Furia on the attack, right? So at least as we're trying to wait to see what's going to happen, ahead of stage one, we sat down with Melzer to get his thoughts on the crew roster changes. So let's see what he has to say. Fue el cambio porque yo me sentía un poco incómodo siendo eh, el rol de GL y estaba afectando un poco mi desempeño, según mi opinión. Y Klaus también estaba dando muy buena idea, entonces creemos que el rol de GL se veía bien para él y para mí soltarme un poco y poder desempeñarme mejor. Y el, la incorporación de Hit es por una lesión que tuvo Motita en su muñeca. Creo que la incorporación de Hit agrega mucho firepower eh, y, y experiencia. Creo que eso es lo que lo identifica más, eh, tiene muy ben, ha tenido muy buen desempeño, tiene muchas buenas propuestas y tiene mucha calma al momento de jugar, que viene de la mano de la experiencia que trae. Yeah, and definitely you see the results so far this first half, and he yeah contributing quite well. Yeah. Maybe not at the top of the board, but that's not his role. He's not going to be the one trying to get the entries for the team, right? But his assist factor is there. And it's crazy. It's not crazy to see. It's good to see that that role change can be there mentally as well. That he's not being like, no, let me just I'll push up again. Let me be that first to peak. No, it's it really is syncing up well for Crew and how it's supposed to work on paper and in the server. <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> I mean, you got to be focused when you got to lurk, right? I, I kind of like this. When you're actually really close to that monitor, if you're looking at the bottom left yeah. of what we're talking about here, yeah. what Shai is currently doing is your focus is now, I have to have the perfect lurk, which means I don't need to focus on my minimap. I know my pathing that I have to do. I'll get that backstab. <laughs> Let's see, you're basic. What doesn't look the same in front of me? Oh, a shoulder broke that angle. Boom, shoot. <laughs> you're seeing that. Pixel perfect. And we'll see what they can do to keep it going because, man, it has been working so far for a crew. 10 
to two on that first half and in dominating fashion to simply run the same strats, really default it up until that first blood comes through. And then it wasn't even a first blood. There were a few 1v1s that would happen. Then crew gets their trade on the rotation, the way they were controlling Fury as retakes. It's not fun to play that type of game. So let's see if Fury gets to play here on attack side. As we get back into this one, round 13. And just a few seconds left before they hop on. Ghost, Sheriff for both sides. Not the Sheriff, though, on side of crew. Just Ghost across the board almost. As Klaus looks to keep that armor for himself. Yeah, definitely looking to have a little bit of utility here on the defensive side of crew. So they could try to push some players back on the aggression that's attempted by Pudia. But Keznit first blood. Smelling more players on the other side of this wall and trying to chase him down. And oh. that's where it was labor kills, but manages to get a second one at the shy. Quick 2v2 in the door, or 3v3 rather, and the door is open to tree. Yeah. While all of this happens, though, I mean, Khalil Whoop. gets a one for one, too, but planted. given the, the time for the attacker side to rotate towards a open a door, get a plant, but they're double pushing towards spawn. I'm liking this. It might catch these two players up through off guard. Just around the corner, it's Kesnit and Melzer. Scaling back up towards the staircase. One smoke, one blast pack. But he'll isolate now. Well, he was looking to be isolated on two different 1v1. As Havoc lands that shot, Melzer looking for one towards the back of the side. The dick is not enough. All right. Furia, they score the pistol round, and this might be what they needed here. Yeah. Bring it back on the second half. The pistol round, a must. The rest of them also a must. They do not have much of a chance here to let any of these go. Gotta keep crew down in that money hole. Let's see, good guard here on to B. The Fury was backing each other up, expecting at least to, a, a little bit of pressure to happen at B, if not the lurker be there in the end. And that's, yeah. <laughs> they are breathing a sigh of relief on this. They can still look at Lotus as something they need to hit. Yeah. All right. Back in spawn as we would expect. Second round, avoid all the utility and any zany pushes from crew. But still, quite spread out here. Furia is taking space. Oh. This is big. Shy breaking that dog, yeah. and they'll just think, okay, he's the Killjoy player playing C-Site. Nice little dink at least comes out from Havoc, but they don't know about this. Four, the other three players inside the smoke, and finally they do when you hear those jumps coming across. Kazde was able to get one fight, and somehow Havoc still gets dropped by Melzer. Numbers game. He said, I saw three. They said, okay, we run. Now towards A, Shy's jumping into the <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be tough. He's done so. <laughs> at least the rotate's coming out from crew. Yep. There's lurks around. And also, at least, when they got that pick on that C site, there was no weapon upgrades apparently available for crew visa. Yeah, just a sheriff coming down from Shy as he detected all those members now trying to get this retake. Klaus, Melzer, and he. Taken out. Should be easy huh? uh, now to close out the round, especially with Nasra on the Vandal. Running away to the last two players, realizing they can't really get the surprise Last factor. Player standing. He went all the way back down. Yeah. So you pick up a sheriff. Yeah. Let's see if he has it. Make that damage. Ooh. But it's clean. Pretty decent there for Furia to convert the pistol round. Nicely done. Still have that vandal. Sheriffs were there. It looks like they're going to go straight in on this bonus, too. Feeling good about that buy with what they're able to bring in from second round. And this is, this has to be kind of Furia going for the alt orb game, using every advantage that they can get to get these rounds. Because they have to expect Crew's going to try to play just as fast. Already an Odin from Klaus getting a little funky towards Tree. And Pillars is the name of the game to start. So a bit of the pistol round strat from Furia, but do they commit? Is the question, and it's a no. Just that util mess. They find that KJ has a bit at B. It was a deep alarm bot that was placed there by Shy, and then also yeah, forced Melzer to throw the paranoia out early towards the front B, which means he has no util towards the C site. Seems like Furia recognizes it. As they'll flash and try to gain pressure, gain control of Mountain, and they'll be able to do that successfully. Prowler now on the defense, thrown by Groovisa. 
Havoc now connected by that. Both Nanoswarms out too. They're taking a lot of space, but then they're giving it up, and that space isn't any anything of the site. They've received a bit of util back. The haunt detects towards A. This is actually great timing to move up for Furia. And they should have numbers over towards the right Toxins side. A little bit of a reset on the defensive. We'll make it a 1-2-2. Two, two. Uh oh. Actually. <laughs> actually. The pinch to baby door here. It was a jump spot too. That spotted them and allows for him to set up with this Odin, but the flash he gets hit by it. Still has support from Kenzin out towards the baby door. Shy now the second one trying to run through, but he gets stopped by a snake bite thrown on the attack. Still one more player inside. There's 20 seconds left on the clock. They're going backwards. What are they right doing? back at the shy and they fall. And there's only two players left with 13 seconds left. On the side of Furia, spotted by the turret. Left. Shy playing the off angle. Trying to at least deny the plant. Nosler attempting it. Now a nice little kill by Conan. The backstab there from Shy and a 1v1-1 on both ends. Crew ends up getting a defuse. And they get the first round on defense. Hey, almost had it. If you never commit, neither can they. <laughs> almost to be at the last second to stretch Crew thin, but... So much indecision in that round. A lot, they went towards B, they fake B, and you get you get crew to rotate out of their positions. That's great, Furia backs up. All right, C is a bit of a focus. They util oh, around no. C, but never get past mound, and uh, a lot of everyone's util is gone on both sides. And then the A hit just gets all muddled up in tree. That is not the round crew uh, Furia wanted to continue this second half with. We saw the hope that came out as well when Furia won that piss around. Players were vocal there on the attack side of Furia. Nas were being very vocal as well, adding a little bit of leadership too. Snuff under the new banner of Furia. Yet potentially could be deflated now as crew. It's now two rounds away of winning this first map. Going back into the early pressure on the seaside for Furia. They have seekers to work with. But again, just a trade of utility. Seeing the pain shells coming out from the seaside, and they know they looked at that at what's happening on the top of the HUD. They know that yep. Kezin has a showstopper. They're gonna avoid that right away. Seekers out. And the seekers out to push towards the A site. Oh. But all this spam of the Odin gives so much time here for Kesnit to rotate across towards A with the showstopper ready. That reopens the door, but Shai okay. just died towards B. An opening, an opportunity for crew to move inside B for the plant. At least MW0 dies from the showstopper. He tried to walk forward. Khalil oh is trying gosh. to walk that angle. And thankfully, we didn't move too far out. There's still some players alive, but playing quite passively here. There's a potential crossbar setup of Fudia. Out towards this A site. Khalil will be first contact. Kezin and Heat together. The Odin spray connects up to Conan. Melter gets the kill. The trade from Kezin now, and the disadvantage is on to Fudia. Back to the IGL and an LMS against Kezin. Gets the shot as well. And will manage to salvage a round for Fudia. That's incredibly big. That's game point for, for crew if they grab it. Nas were all the way on his shoulders. IGL fragging. Yeah. <laughs> Get again. the kills in 17 and 11 for the IGL here from Furia. And this play, and it was uh, strength as a team for Furia, right? They still do a bit of the A play. They don't worry about pillars. Baby door, breakable rather, is the answer. They flood through, they get the site as a team, and they're not trying to do kind of a, a two util trick game, or not trick, but just having two U, uh, people flash and then trade or do this. Everyone back each other up there. That was hard for me to say, sorry. All right, <laughs> 11 to five now in this one. Crew's gonna call the timeout. They realize a bit of momentum's there for Furia, but there needs to be a discussion apparently just what coach is seeing, how they can reset, and what they need to do to make sure Furia doesn't get any more here. Maybe on this one, since it's crew on a little buy, yeah, it is. Yeah. But for these further rounds, they should have the ultimates up, especially heats. If, any, if anything, on the last round, crew had perfect reads on everything until there was a slight over rotate from Shy. Yeah. That was going to try to support towards the A side at the staircase, but you can definitely see that. Furia, despite them trailing so far behind, the game plan is still there. Force these rotate outs of these positions and faking these parts from C to A. Going back through that breakable door, catching players off to rotate. So they have some sort of a game plan as well to continue that type of pressure. 
And Ku potentially now calls a timeout to answer onto this. Potentially won't be this round though, because they're on a thrifty buy, the strongest weapon being a guardian in the hands of Kesdin. Sometimes that's actually good enough in the hands of Ku. And as I say that, the wall bang onto Conan. How does that happen? Now four players are going to try to move forward and have it. Oh. He, he's got a sixth sense and he <laughs> has to grab this spike to meet up with his teammates. But as I he's running spike. back, the players are closing oh, in on the defensive down. side of crew. Oh, oh, he's going to hear so much. Elephants. Yeah. Stampeding through to B. And Which then is look at pushing spawn. Exactly. And that's why Melzer is currently waiting with the Sheriff and still connects there. Headshot onto Endo Vizera. Havoc with all these footsteps hurt though, he's going to engage for a backstab. And so far has a good timing. Should be an easy one here against Klaus. And he'll get info for the other two players that they're scaling back towards heaven. Oh, he's going for a walk. A little walk in the park. There's that headshot. Now closing out, swarming out from yeah. the paranoia being thrown on the attack from Khalil. Where Cruz surprise on that first blood might be the only positive thing to get out of this round. Furia looks pretty good to close out this round. Although labored once again. Heat getting two kills out of that. Escapes with a Vandal and a Nightfall for the next round. Yet Furia still gets the round no matter what. Six now for the side of Furia. We did see, we talked about it on their defensive side that they didn't really have map control to start the extremities. They don't have the C's nade. They don't have a lot of things that would make crew care as attackers. But now Furia gets to play their own game using the utility where they prioritize and they are able to route crew based on how they're playing the map. The shots are coming in the site. It's been two very different halves in the sense that crew had absolute firepower to win their rounds. Furia is playing that organized game of strategy right now and finding the fights in sight and trading each other. Here towards A, still have a lurk towards Pillars. This is a big push from Melzer that could start to give this info that the A collapse is good from crew. That Nightfall on the defense gets so much info. That's Conan to fall first. Yeah. A couple of them now being deafened. Still trying to hold towards Rubble. There's at least Havoc that's able to slip across the defense and is trying to find a backstab. Seeker's getting info on two players towards B. He's being watched now. He catches, catches, catches it off guard. Now our TP towards upper B. Showstopper out in the attack used by MW Zira. Trying to clear out towards A. <laughs> He trying to run across and he's able to get the contact on the first kill and finally eats the rocket from behind. Run. In the I process play. though, Shy, I mean all of crew so far are finding these timings. An immediate trade after losing a couple of players. Lockdown has been initiated here for Furia. So that's gonna run the clock down off that spike. Time out. Melzer will have to try to open the door, try to keep the players at bay when we'll be able to throw the paranoia, pushing them back towards A-site, where MWZ are just won against Melzer, and Nas will yeah. won his own 1v1 as well. That was an important round here, Riv, because the economy was low for both of these teams, and definitely if it was going to be Crude Visa's victory, it was definitely going to be map over. Furia, the 5v4 conversion on that too. I believe it was Klaus that opened up the round for us and then Furia no, still going. able to get in, get the lockdown plant. And yeah, that pushback gives him just enough time to set up. Nasr is well on one right now. 21 and 12 has not slowed down. Last time we checked in, it was 17 frags. So just collecting heads right now. As they go towards C, Furia feeling the momentum right now, and they're going to keep pressuring this low by Melzer again with the Sheriff. Just doesn't stop. Takes down the duelist, oh, eats a paranoia, and is able to TP away. So you'll take that for one Sheriff shot, one body, and an important piece of util on the attack for Furia. So you do have this eco. Hero rifle for a heat. Placing swamp grenade. With this Vandal, Pain oh. Shell is pushing Havoc away. He eats. The majority of that damage. Yeah. Placing swarm grenade. He's forced to fall back and regroup out. with his teammates, especially now that the turret's down. Furia now moving towards the A site because he's lost control on both C and B at the beginning of this round. And Melzer has done so much for the team already this round. Any blast packing in is now snuffed out, and you see how tentative Furia walks up now, trying to figure out where this slew of sheriffs could be that's hiding on the other side. A lockdown? Oh, they feel like they might be too close after that goes down. 
I mean, you might still be able to use it yeah. here. They just want to make sure they don't get the pressure from the staircase. And an instant trade comes out. He, again, still has his Vandal and Kezd it with the Guardian waiting for a slow lurk to happen from the B site. As he escaped, though, Conan's able to get the headshot onto Melzer. Kezd it going to group up with Shy and he. Dog coming out on the attack. He could not connect. On the surprise Ten kill, attempted onto Havoc, and as he re he gets picked. But there's the punch of Kesson, the Guardian, and the Sheriff of both Kesson and Shy puts Crew Visa at map point. Furia has just been on the edge of that happening on each of these rounds, staving it off, staving Furia's waterfall into sight, retakes until this finally. They find it on the low buy still, it's been so close. And Melzer, this this opener on the round, he, you saw how slow Furia played after it. Oh, came down to the post plant, and yeah, Kesnit saying, we got this. We calm down, we're good. Calm it, had the read, knowing that nobody was on B, had a chance to even wall bang late now to prevent the spike from getting planted. Melzer trying to push even more for it in round number 20. Gets stopped now by a boom button. Really, it's only him with a one-way smoke doing so much work anchoring the seaside. So as they push back towards front B, there's three players from Crew Visa waiting right there for Furia. And they're denying entry. It's one of the tough things. I don't know, the, the sky, right? If they're going to take Mound, let's just go over that as they slowly take this. They're having trouble taking Mound there with that one-way just. You can Skybird over, but it doesn't tell you how many are there. If you Haunt over, you might be able to get a ping. You might be able to play off a little more with a Prowler follow. Is it The Util game seems like it's just not working for Fury, even though Sky works, right? It's yeah. not a problem in the composition, but it does not seem like it's giving them the space that they need right now, especially losing members in the beginning, crew opening up with more First Bloods, and just making it so hard for Fury to put something together. They smoked out the turret at least left. to really be able to get into the site, forcing the players of Kuvis to fall back and play the retake. And they retake with a showstopper first. It connects right at the entrance, fully blinded. There and there you go. The players falling down there for Fudia. A dominating map, no matter what, for Kuvisa for the first map. Furia showing some life on that second half, coming out of the pistol that they needed so much, but Crew still with the firepower. Kesnit on top, 23 and 16, seven first bloods. But behind that, Klaus, six first bloods. Klaus on that lurk, but also the front of the strats. A lot of the times when they were taking rubble control, incredible stuff across the board as Crew put this squad together and are already seeing results. Definitely seeing results to start things off. I haven't seen it yet there for Furia. They may have a chance to bring it back on that yeah, second map, yeah. but it's not their map pick. So they'll still have to keep guessing. They'll still have to try to keep fighting on Icebox coming up after the break. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <sighs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through Attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this. 